So how's the war going in uh, Iraq and Syria? I, I know that Trump said he was going to get really tough on ISIS. Uh, we'll share some of the, his thoughts about that in a second. Um, that's easy enough to say. Uh, but how about civilians? Well, first, now let's be fair. Let's talk about what Obama did when he was fighting the same war against ISIS in those two countries. Air Wars is a group that uh, documents civilian deaths. Um, the coalition forces and the U.S. forces have in the, uh, at certain times said they're part of the same team as us. They're helping to count civilian casualties. Obviously, our guys undercount because, you know, they, they, so for example, some of the ways that we undercount is we won't talk to any witnesses on the ground. Bullshit. Air Wars does talk to witnesses. They have a more accurate count. So that this does not bode well for Obama. Air Wars researchers estimate that at least 2,300 civilians likely died from coalition strikes overseen by the Obama White House, roughly 80 each month in Iraq and Syria. One of the things that we used to criticize Obama about is in the places, not necessarily here, but in the places where they did signature strikes from drones, uh, that meant that they did not know who was on the receiving end of that bomb. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Oh my God, stop fucking lying. They knew that, hey, we have some signatures there, like it might be a cell phone. Well, we think that cell phone was at some point connected to a bad guy. Let's go ahead and bomb it. Now, uh, Trump uh, promised to do worse. Let's take a look at what Trump promised during the campaign. Don't even I would worry knock about a the hell out of, I would, I'd like to do one thing at a time. I would knock the hell out of ISIS. Okay. I would hit them, I would hit them, Brian, so hard like they've never been What about hit civilian before. casualties? What, what about the fact that we're targeting them and people are very concerned about collateral damage? I would do my best, absolute best, but we're That's fighting right. a very politically correct war. Yeah. Well, we see that and the other thing everybody. is with the terrorists, you have to take out their families. When you get these terrorists, you have to take out their families. They, they care about their lives, don't kid yourself. Mr. But they Trump. say they don't care about their lives. You have to take out their families.
So he promised to murder civilians. And then he got elected. So did he murder more civilians? The answer is yes. Now, he said terrorist families. Now, when you're dropping a bomb, how do you know if it's a terrorist family or someone else's family? So, for example, sometimes uh, under the Trump watch, we'll drop a bomb because all rules are now suspended, apparently. You'll get the details in a second. Um, because we saw, we think we saw an ISIS fighter on a rooftop two homes away, and we'll drop a bomb on the house that's not the one he was on, but the one that's two away. Serious? All right, let's prove it out. So is that the case? Let's look at the numbers. Maybe, uh, maybe he's killing less civilians than Obama. Let's find out. As of July 13th, more than 2,200 additional civilians appear to have been killed by a coalition raid since Trump was inaugurated. Upwards of 360 per month, or 12 or more civilians killed for every single day of his administration. So let me just put those numbers in context. The entire time that Obama was president, 2,300 civilians were killed in this conflict. Trump in the first six months has already killed 2,200 civilians, almost caught him. Um, and now let's look at uh, the numbers that they just outlined there. Under Obama, civilian casualties were 80 per month. Under Trump, they're 360 per month, four and a half times greater. Now, think about the earlier number. Uh, 12 or more civilians killed every single day of his administration. So you wake up today, and I know that a lot of Americans look and go, oh my God, what did he tweet today? And sometimes it's very serious, sometimes it's light, and we laugh at what an idiot our president is. But every day that you wake up, understand that Trump has authorized through his actions 12 more innocent civilians killed in Syria and Iraq. Every day, the next day another 12, the next day another 12. That is, those are the numbers. Uh, that we've gotten. So how did we get here? Well, as the Daily Beast reports, it, uh, to give you one more sense of context for how bad it can be at any particular time. In one well-publicized incident in Mosul, the U.S. admits it was responsible for killing more than 100 civilians in a single strike during March. So, uh, that one we admit, we say, oh yeah, yeah, no, no, those numbers are accurate, we killed 100 at one time. Oops, <laughs> what difference does it make? We promised that we'd kill their families. There they are, I mean, I, maybe they're related, who cares? Okay, uh, if they care, they're certainly not uh, showing any evidence that they do. So how do we get here? In one of his first moves as president, Trump ordered a new counter-ISIS plans to be drawn up. Second on his list of requests were recommended, quote, changes to any United States rules of engagement and other United States policy restrictions that exceed the requirements of international law regarding the use of force against ISIS. <laughs> In other words, we have now changed the rules and said, that's it, have at it, Hoss. So don't worry about the protection of civilians. Do the bare minimum to protect civilians. Let's go get them. And if a lot of civilians die along the way, <laughs> they're not US civilians, who cares? <laughs> they're, they're, they're grandma, grandpa's babies, whatever. Remember when Trump uh, pretended to care about the beautiful babies in Syria when Assad had, uh, we think, had killed him during uh, doing that uh, chemical strike. He's like, oh, the beautiful babies, the beautiful babies. How about all the ones we're killing? Ah, oh, who cares? Who cares? Let's go kill their families. Okay, uh, Larry Lewis is uh, 
joint civilian casualty study lead analyst. He says, if we're losing opportunities to hit ISIS because we're nervous about civilian casualties, if it is not required by law, then uh, we're saying really look at it hard. Now, so he support, appears to be supporting Trump's policies, going, hey, listen, man, I mean, if I miss an opportunity to hit an ISIS guy a couple of houses away, because I was worried about 11 family members sitting there having dinner and with their kids, and I was concerned about their life, well, then I'm not going to be able to hit ISIS hard enough. And by the way, that will be persuasive to some right-wingers. So a former State Department official is going to explain why it's counterproductive. He said, we have spent a long time advancing the idea that preventing civilian casualties is not only a moral imperative, it's also an operational one. These lessons come directly from our military's counterinsurgency experiences in Afghanistan and are endorsed by members of our military at some of the highest levels. But so far, we haven't seen or heard anything that shows that President Trump understands that. Uh, well, and then here's a CENTCOM spokesperson uh, was on the phone with the Hill. They had to walk this one back because it seemed a little too politically incorrect. But he identified himself as a spokesperson for CENTCOM and told a reporter this. President Trump said prior that once he gets in, he's going to kick the S-H-I-T out of the enemy. That was his promise. And that's exactly what we're doing. <laughs> well, but, okay, show me body counts of ISIS fighters. Okay. But... What we've got here is body counts of civilians. So that's not kicking the SHIT out of anything other than uh, innocent people. At the beginning of the Mosul operation, the Islamic State militant group had held the city and other northern Iraqi territory for over two years. A coalition of Iraqi army forces, Kurdish Peshmerga forces, and Shiite militias covered with U.S.-led air cover made a battle plan. As the most dense, most populated, final bastion of the Islamic State in the city. By June, Iraqi forces had successfully encircled the Old City, trapping the last remaining militants in the winding streets of the historic Old City. By the second week of July, at great cost, nine months of hard fighting was over in the city, as the conventional core of the Islamic State group had been defeated. So how is this being enforced? And one last example, Lieutenant General Stephen J. Townsend says proudly, we shoot every boat we find. 